Hello, my name is Alexander Eriquez, and I will explain the main theme of The Other West Moore, written by West Moore. This book mainly focuses on two young boys, both named West Moore, that grew up fatherless in similar Baltimore neighborhoods. However, one of them became a Rhodes Scholar, a veteran, and a business leader, while the other was convicted for murder and sentenced to life in prison. This book shows how both boys were molded into the adults they are today through the decisions they have made and their experiences. This is an example of coming of age, the main theme I think this book is trying to explore. The author, Wes Moore, has many significant choices in this format of the book. For example, the author divides each chapter into two parts, one for each Wes Moore. The two chapters focus on an event in their lifetime where the two stories in one chapter are different perspectives of each Westmore's life, focusing on a single idea. For example, in the first chapter, Is Daddy Coming With Us?, Westmore, the actual author of the book, hits his sister. This angers his mother and he is sent to his room. His father talks to him about why he should not hit his sister Nikki. He recalls this as one of the couple of memories he has of his father. His father unfortunately died of acute epiglottitis when Wes was at a young age. In the book, Wes says after the dialogue between his father and him about Wes hitting Nikki, that is one of the only two memories I have of my father. The other was when I watched him die. This shows that Wes did not have a strong relationship with his father due to a faint memory of him. Wes had a hard time growing up without a father. The other Westmore also grew up without a father. Even though his father did not pass away, he did leave Wes's mother Mary. Wes's biological father, Bernard, was an alcoholic and was not a reliable husband or father. In the book, also in the chapter, Is Daddy Coming With Us?, it says, Since leaving high school years prior, Bernard hadn't found a steady job. He spent most of his time searching for himself at the bottoms of liquor bottles. Mary was left with two alcoholic, abusive men who shared the DNA of her two children, but no husband or dad for her boys. This shows that Mary really depended on Bernard to help take care of her children. However, he was an alcoholic, and his not-so-steady job wouldn't be able to support a whole family. Even though each Westmore had a different childhood, they still both dealt with growing up fatherless. The author also ends each chapter with a cliffhanger. A cliffhanger keeps the reader interested in the book. Not only does the author add cliffhangers, use of foreshadowing is common as well. There are multiple lines of foreshadowing in this book that lead to what will happen later on in the book. For example, at the end of chapter 3, when the other Westmore gets the job to wear a headset to notify the group he was working for that police were coming, Wes remembers when he experienced the power of drugs. In the story, it says, as Wes placed the headset over his freshly cut fade and adjusted it, he remembered the story. The headset now fit perfectly. There was definitely money to be made. This quote foreshadows all the crime Wes commits, such as drug dealing, attempted murder, burglary, and even murder of a banker, ultimately leading to life in prison. Tony, Wes's older brother, worried Wes would get into a lot of trouble, since Tony was already dealing drugs, yet Wes still looked up to him as a brother. Also, the author has use of metaphors as well. In that same quote from the end of chapter 3, it says, The headset fit perfectly. This does not only foreshadow the criminal Wes would soon be, but it's also a metaphor explaining that Wes fit imperfectly as a troublemaker. With an older brother that is already in the drug game and so many bad influences in the neighborhood, Wes was just meant to be in on all the drug dealing and criminal activity. Another choice of format the author uses is his placement of images in the book. Books for a more adult audience usually do not have many pictures or even any. The reader has to picture what is happening in the book with their mind. The whole point of reading is imagining what is happening in the book as your eyes soak up the words in the book as your mind puts them to action. In this book, the pictures are shown in the middle of the book to picture what is happening in the story. For example, 
In chapter 7, there is a pause in the book where images with small descriptions are shown. It shows pictures of West at Valley Forge, West in South Africa, the other West Moor with his headgear on, West in prison, etc. These pictures show the reader what the character looked like, showing them what the characters are doing, visually instead of through words, and help tell the story to sum up everything that has happened in the book. In conclusion, both of the West Moors had experienced the main idea of coming of age in the book. Authors' choices that Westmore used helped this main idea of coming of age be obvious in the book. When comparing the two Westmore's lives, at some times the reader could even relate to one of them. The main idea of coming of age is what I think this book was trying to focus on.